Hello everyone, welcome back. This evening we're going to do a quick unboxing of some parts for the Silver Burst. We'll talk about what we got, what we did, where we're going with it, some updates. So what do we got here? Okay. This is the pre-wired jack switch that we had bought for it. Nice and clean Tone Pro, double contact, locks it in real nice. So we'll we'll use that and uh, save ourselves a little bit of a little bit of wiring there. But it's got the nice vintage cloth wiring on it. So that will go with the Gibson 300K linears that are all matched. Uh, they wrote down the values on it all to 284. Not sure what that means. Still a little stupid on that stuff, but uh, we are going to have a family member come in and solder all this together. We don't know if we're going to use any caps on this yet or not because we have that Veritone switch uh, that I talked about in the last unboxing video. We don't know if we're going to use uh, the brown drops, blue drops, the spurge discs, or some tropical fish if we do that. It will just be the four pots, just like uh, we did in the cherry burst. But if we end up going with the Veritone switch with the six capacitors, again, we can change these up. We don't have to use the Russian capacitors that came with this switch. We can change it up and we can use any of six of these capacitors. So we'll just have to decide what we want to do if we use the Veritone switch. So we have tons of options here uh, for capacitors, tones, and sounds. So we're going to go ahead and move on here and see what else that we got. Oh, they bagged this one real good. Oh. So here it is. This is the six-way switch. So, let's go ahead and give this an open. Now, you guys know I've been bitching and I didn't want to use uh, modern wiring. We got two, two switch caps with that. That was nice. So you get a cream or a black. We'll go ahead and just throw that in with our parts there. So now you guys all know that I gutted the Silver Burst because it had modern wiring in it and it had uh, four conductor pots or uh, pickups in it. So. We'd sold all the pickups, four wire conductors, with the four push-push pots, the jack plate, and the three-way switch that had the modern wiring. Now, I could have desoldered that three-way switch and saved myself 40 bucks, but uh, we went ahead and gave that guy a real good deal. Uh, a subscriber of the channel bought all the guts out of that guitar. Um, so this six-way switch, though, the only reason I'm considering using this is because there's so many different combinations that we can use on the pickups. So let's uh, just kind of reiterate again. You guys didn't see this either, so sneak peek. We got the third pickup hole routed in, so watch for that video. Uh, we were down at Lay's and we've got this routed right on film. So you can see this from start to finish. And also we talked to Steve and we got some uh, famous guitars that were unpacked and videoed from uh, Billy Gibbons and some other people. So stay tuned for those. But again, let's go back and reiterate with this. If we put the six-way switch in here, at that point, we have each individual pickup. So we can do neck, we can do middle, we can do bridge. We can do bridge and middle, and then we can do middle and neck. Or, you know, we can do uh, neck and bridges. We can do six combinations, and when you use the three-way switch, no matter how you wire it, you'll never get the center pickup. Now, uh, I was talking to Dan, and he was saying to use a three-way switch if I wanted to go with the vintage wiring. My Veritone with six caps, so we have six different tones, and then he said use a blender. So the blender is going to be the closest that we're going to get to using the center pickup by itself with the three-way switch in vintage wiring. So with the blender, we're not going to completely get the center pickup if we go that way. But if we use a blending uh, pot here, we can get close to it by using uh, the center and bridge or center and neck. But again, 
I'm not real uh, real sure which, which way I'm going to go with that yet. Uh, he said he could wire a, I could get a, a naked six-way switch. And I, I found them where they have all the leads spread all the way around. So you have more room to solder uh, the vintage style wiring on it. So you would have a ton of wires and that's the problem. You see how tiny the modern wiring is compared to the thicker, especially the braided metal stuff. Uh, and that's what you really want to use. So to get all those wires soldered to a six way vintage style and they get them all fed down through here with the three pickups and all that, it, it'd probably work. It, it'd be really tight, but, uh, Again, if I just want to ignore that this is vinyl wiring, uh, this would be the only thing that's in the guitar that is not vintage. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna keep thinking about what we want to do. So once I get all my parts, and we'll we'll sit down and hash it out one more time. But uh, this one here was made in England. Uh, the other one that I found is made in Germany and I think I might buy that just for shits and giggles to have for a future project and we can see the difference between the two six-way switches the England versus the Germany and the Germany one like I said has all the leads all the way around it so you can solder the vintage style wiring to it so uh, also we did get the uh, finishing check done on this we're gonna go over that later so moving on here we got one more box the open and I do have more stuff on the way. This isn't everything. I thought it would all be here by Friday and it was not. So we'll have to wait till Monday or Tuesday to see if everything else shows up. So what we have here, I already know what this is because I didn't know what it was and I cheated and opened it. So 1996 Gibson 135. This has P100s in it, not P90s. Some people talk a bunch of smack about the P100s because they expect the sound of the P90. Uh, we do have a brand new set of antiquity, vintage relic right from the factory P90s here we're gonna use in a future project. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out just so we can reiterate and go over what a P90 is versus a P100. So this is a P90, real thin, flat, single coil, adjustable poles. Here is the P100. So this is a stacked humbucker. Now don't quote me, the regular humbucker is a side-by-side -side coil where the P100 is a stacked coil. Now I can't remember which one is which, but one is wired in parallel and one is wired in series. That's what's gonna give you your different tones. And I myself, when you plug this thing in, this sounds amazing. I absolutely love the way this sounds. Will these sound that good in something else? I don't know, we're gonna find out because these are destined for a solid body project. We're gonna buy another deluxe um, and we're gonna do that. I originally had purchased uh, the Seymour Duncan antiquities along with the bumblebees and everything that I put in here. I originally bought all that for this, but then I decided to go with the mini humbuckers uh, because I really don't like the cherry burst. Um, it, it's, it's okay. It's a beautiful guitar, but it's just not something that I personally want to keep in my collection. So I decided to go with the mini humbuckers and keep the antiquities to myself and this having Gibson pickups in it might help it sell better because some people are pretty particular about they want their Gibson pickups in it. So that is your difference here. Your, your P90 is literally just a single coil and your P100 is not a P90. It is a mini hum, it's basically a mini humbucker. It's a stacked humbucker in a P90 configuration. Uh, this will fit in your deluxe with uh, the mini humbuckers because of the depth. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know if you see a 
Les Paul, like I had the 2018 and you take the pickups out, it's very shallow. These just screw right down to the guitar where these drop in there pretty, pretty far. So we have, now we have a, a set of P100s to play with. We have a set of P90s. We still have uh, the Seymour Duncan uh, humbuckers up there that we took out of the 76 and we also have two of the 2000 humbuckers that oops I should have put this back on there getting ahead of myself so anyways those two chrome ones up there they go in the silver burst and we have that third pickup is on the way too so we're gonna have a 498R a uh, 490R and a 490T. So we'll have one treble and two rhythms. I personally like the rhythms better than the treble, so that's the way I went. Um, and again, I bought uh, those two were out of a 2000 uh, Les Paul Studio, so they are 20 years old, new old stock. And I can't remember what year I got the other one out of, but it was pretty much the same error. Uh, I'll have to look at the listing again in order to tell you so when we get that in and i do the unboxing on it uh i'll tell you what year it is but i went out of my way to to find three pickups all with the vintage wiring and all of them to have the gibson logo etched in it because again um I like a factory looking job. So even though this, this, this guitar has been modified, we put a third pickup in it. We're not gonna put the original pots and stuff back in it. I was a stickler and I stuck to Gibson and I made sure I got a, a good match set all with a 9% sticking with all vintage Gibson uh, pickups that way the person that buys this if somebody buys this because i'm building this for me but if it's all everything's for sale so when i build this somebody else may want it and if they do it will be awful nice for them to be able to take the strings off pull all the pickups out and you have all identically matched gibson pickups looks like a factory did it like it came right from the factory like that that's the way i like it that's the only way i want to do stuff I don't want to do mismatch pickups. I don't want some kind of invader in here and this and that and all mismatch pickups. I want everything to look exactly like it should have come right from the factory like that. Um, so that's another uh, another thing that I'm a stickler about with with all my parts is I want it to look factory even if it isn't. So that's what I'm really working hard for on this. And you either like it or you you don't on a project like this, uh, especially with the finish checking I did. And in a couple videos, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and try to show you again because the camera just isn't picking up all the finish checking on this. Um, so we're gonna have to do a black light test. Uh, I still have another polishing to do on this before it's done, uh, but we'll do a black light test on it and turn the lights out and you'll be able to see everything that I did wrong to it to make it look like it's it's old and uh, and weathered and, and whatnot. So, and again, I like I said, I don't want this to look like it was abused. I just want it to look like it was aged. So I'm doing light finish checks on it and stuff. Uh, there is just a couple little tiny nicks in it now from all the terrible things I've been doing to it. But uh, if I was to have been playing it for years on end, like I want it to look like, you would have a couple chips in it anyhow. So we will get back to this. We're gonna start building that soon. I just wanted to do a quick unboxing video of the parts that we have so far. Uh, I did get to order the center pickup ring too, um, off a of reverb. I will give that guy a mention when, he, uh, when his part shows up. Also, I will go through every person that I've bought and mention them and put their links to their stores uh, in the bottom of my videos. So you can always scroll down and look in the link and. I will put in there every shop that I bought a part from. So you'll have a link to where I got the six way switch. You'll have a link to where I got the vintage input jack. You'll have the link to where I got the pots, everything that goes to this guitar. Uh, one of the videos, it won't be everyone, 
one of the videos I will tell you, scroll down and look in the link and then you can go to these people's shops. Uh, I guess that's about it for right now. So we, we got our third pickup in. We just got back from Lay's. We got some more parts in. We're still waiting on a few more parts to come in. As soon as we get them, we will start rolling on this project and get her out the door or it will hang on my rack for a while. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, tell your buddies about it. And again, like I said, if you want a good laugh, if you're experienced, watch my channel. But if you're a dummy like me and you want to figure it out, watch my channel.